Hi, this is Joel Persinger, the gun guy. Thank you very much for watching my videos. I'm very, very grateful that you do. I found a little spot. This is my favorite little spot on the lower shotgun range at the P2K range because I'm under this magnificent tree and it's nice and shady here. And so when it gets warm, if I have an opportunity to be over here, I probably will. You may see me here again if you haven't already. And I've got here a 1022. Now I've already done a video on this particular 1022, uh, but this time I'm going to talk about a stock that was sent to me as a try and evaluate, a T&E model from Adaptive Tactical. And we're going to put it on that 22 and uh, go and shoot it. And I'll let you know what I find out about the stock and what I've already found out about it. And you can decide whether you'd like to have one or not. Personally, I got to tell you, I really like it. It's a great stock. Now, if you'd like to watch the video I did on the 1022 before, you can click on it right here and it'll take you there. But I will put that link up again at the end of this video in case you'd like to continue watching this one. Now, this one is about pretty much this adaptive tactical stock. They were kind enough to send this to me and uh, it's a T&E. So unfortunately, I get to send it back, <laughs> but it is really awesome and I've enjoyed fiddling with it and I found it to be really easy to install and very uh, adaptable to a lot of things and very handy in a lot of respects. So uh, this is the RM4 Ruger 1022 stock by Adaptive Tactical and I will put all the links uh, so that you can find it on their website uh, at, the, at the bottom of the video in the link section there in the, in the, in the uh, description. But let's real quick, let's bust it out of here. Changing out the stock and actually um, installing the adaptive tactical stock is so easy, it only takes a few minutes. Now, some 1022s have a, a kind of a, a, a little band around the front up here. This one doesn't, so it makes it even easier. But if you look at this screw on the bottom of the stock, right in front of where the magwell is, that's the only screw that needs to be removed. And I can just take a standard flathead screwdriver and back it right out of there. I mean, it's. It's really the only thing that needs to be undone in order to mount the stock. It's one of the things I liked about it is it was just so ridiculously easy. So once that screw has been removed, all you have to do is lift up on the barrel a little bit and you can slowly, I mean these stocks are pretty tight, you can slowly but deliberately wiggle the action right out of the existing stock and we'll set that aside. Now something you want to be aware of with 1022s is they have a couple of pins in them that want to slide out sometimes and you can see if I tilt it that one starts to slide out. You want to make sure you don't lose that. Uh, that's a pretty important piece. And then there's a little pin right below it that you might be able to see there. You don't want to lose that one either. So now that you made sure that you don't lose those, make sure they're in the right position. Once they're back in the stock, they're held in place so they won't go anywhere. All right, we'll get our adaptive tactical stock out here. And all we're going to do is take the action and angle it in this way so that the bottom of the action will catch in the stock, angle it in and then set it down inside the stock. And now it's in there, it won't lift out. As you can see, I cannot lift it out from, from lifting on, the, on the, the rear of the action or lifting on the scope or anything else. It's not gonna lift out of there. So I'm gonna hold the, uh, the barrel inside there and then we're gonna get this screw, same screw, put it back in the little hole, make sure it threads nice and easy so you don't strip the threads and then just tighten it back in. Now, as you tighten this down, you're going to feel the barrel start to seat into the stock. And all that is is you're just tightening it up. Don't let that bother you, but you'll notice I'm not cranking on it. I'm just turning it in there finger tight. You don't want to crank on it too hard. Uh, it's a gun, not, a, not an engine, <laughs> so it doesn't need to be torqued in. Just tighten it up until it's good and snug, and there you have it. You've just changed the stock on your rifle. Wow, it's about that quick and super, super simple to do. Now, some rifles have a little band up here that you have to deal with. That one didn't, so it makes it a little easier, but all in all, very handy stock. Now, here's the things I like about it. Uh, initially, I, I looked at the color and I thought, well, the camo thing's kind of stupid because it's blue camo and that's not gonna help me anywhere hunting. But the more I looked at it, the more I realized it was beautiful and I really liked the coloring. Now, if I were gonna buy it for hunting, I probably would want a different camo design. But I gotta admit, this one's pretty cool. All right, now the other thing I like about it is I like the adjustable length of pull on the stock. And it's just the same as an AR-15 stock. You just push on the little little button here and it, it's multiple positions. I think it's five or six positions. Uh, it looks like, yeah, it's a, it's a five or six position stock. So, you know, your kids or somebody with smaller stature person or you, you can adjust it and put it wherever you want. 
The stock is very, very light, by the way. Really handy, solid pistol grip. I really like the grip. It's at a great angle, and it's got uh, nice striations in the front to give you a really good positive grip. And I found even when I got the stock a little wet, because I did it on purpose, that I could still really grab a hold of it, and I really got a good grip on the stock. Then on the front of the stock, perhaps you can see the fact that the way that they've they've kind of dovetailed this out is it sweeps out and sweeps top narrow, narrow on the top and sweeps out and gets wider on the bottom so that you have a really good positive grip with, again, the striations up here that really give you an opportunity to grab a hold of that stock. And I found even when I got it wet, I really was able to hang on to it. So if I was out hunting or out in the rain or something with this gun, I can really grab a hold of this stock. It, it's got a really positive grip and I'm not going to lose my gun. Now, now we get into the cool part. That's all positive if you happen to be out doing stuff when it's wet. It looks cool. It seems to be really sturdy. I've kind of, you know, I, I got to confess, I took it out of the package before and I've fiddled with it and shot with it and like that uh, before I showed you how to do that. And I've, I've had some time with it and I've discovered some really cool stuff about it. One, it's really sturdy and strong. I was very impressed with how strong it is and how, how solidly it locks up, how solidly this locks up. It doesn't want to move, doesn't seem to rattle. But there's some neat features I really like on it. One is the fact that I can take my rotary magazine and I can have a couple of extra ones and put them here in the stock. Now, I gotta be honest, my first thought when I saw that before I took it out of the package was, that's stupid, I'm gonna put these in here and they're gonna fall out and then I'm gonna be ticked because I lost an expensive magazine out wandering around somewhere in the desert and never gonna find it again. And then I went to put one in there and I was like, whoa, that's hard to get in there. These have a rubberized, kind of a rubber insert in, in, in each one that compresses against the magazine when you put the magazine in. So it has a really positive grip on the magazine. You can see I had to really press it to get it in there. And as you put them in and take them out, it's going to lighten up on its grip a little bit. But that magazine is in there. I just pressed it in. And now I can't get it to come out. I mean, it hasn't moved at all. In fact, to get it out, I have to really wiggle it and pull it to get it out. Now, does that help me in a tactical situation? No, and it is a tactical stock, but to be honest with you, I'm probably not going to use a 1022 in a tactical situation anyway. I've got better rifles for that. Uh, but if that's what you're thinking, that may be an issue for you. But the nice part, as far as I was concerned, is I know, again, there's the other slot, that my mag is not going to fall out of there, and I'm not going to lose a really expensive, I mean, these rotary mags are not cheap, and I don't want to lose them. I want to be able to use them. And I like the fact that now I can carry an extra 20 rounds of ammo already loaded in, in the rotary magazines on my rifle. I don't have to have them in my pocket or in my backpack or rucksack or something. They're just on my rifle. I got a mag in it and I got two extra ones and they're not going to fall out and disappear on me. That was very important to me. One of my other favorite things about this stock is this rail system, which you don't see because it's not there yet. But it kind of is. This is reversible. You can pull out this little piece of the stock here and flip it over and you have a nice little rail. Now there's a couple little parts of this feature that I really like. One is the fact that it's simple to change. It's just an Allen head screw and you spin it right out. It just takes a second. Uh, and they're not, you know, they're in there kind of snug but they're not Gorilla tight so you don't have to worry about that. And you just take the little screws out. And this is stuff that even non-mechanical guys like me can do. You know, as I've said many times, I'm a firearms instructor, but I'm not a gunsmith. Now, that said, this is something I want to point out to you that I, I really appreciated about the design of this stock. So often, I want to remove something like this or change it out, and it's in there really snug, and I can't get it out. And then I find i got to get a screwdriver or something as a pry tool and pry it out, because it's the only way to get it out of there. And the designer never thought about that. They thought, well, I'll make this really tight. And then you end up boogering up your stock. You scratch something up or scratch the finish or whatever because you had to use a pry tool. Well, in the instructions that came with this stock, it even indicates, hey, if you need to use a screwdriver or something to pop this out, go ahead. We've provided nice little slots for you to do so. So you can see there's a slot right there and there's a slot right there that the designers of this product have already provided a place where I can put my screwdriver in and I can wiggle those little pieces out. And that saves me from boogering up my nice, uh, you know, tactical stock. I don't have to do that. I can just take my little screwdriver and very gently pop it up because they've provided me with a spot to do that 
And I, when I saw that, I thought, wow, okay, these are some designers who really gave some thought to this when they designed the product. Now, I've got that out. All I got to do is flip it over, and there's my rail, as you can see. I just put it right back in, put my screws back in, and uh, take my little Allen uh, wrench, screw, whatever, you want, Allen wrench, Allen, whatever you want to call it, tool, and uh, get them in there. And just put them in there kind of finger tight. That's about all you got to do. It's not going to wiggle out. And if you wanted to, I suppose you could put a little uh, blue lock tight on it if, if they wiggled out on you, but I don't think they will. But now you've got a nice little rail in the front. You can attach a, well, anything you want, anything that fits on a rail system. You can put a light up there, put a bipod up there. You could put a, I suppose you could put a monopod up there. You could just about anything you wanted to do with it. So it's very, very cool that that's there. Now you'll notice right in front of it is also a sling swivel that's already there. You already have attachments for slings on the stock. You don't have to put them on there and buy them separately. They're already there. Now, the other thing, I mentioned monopods. They didn't send this with me uh, to me, but I wish they had. But I want to at least let you know that as a separate item, you can get it. There's a monopod that fits inside the grip. So it's adjustable. It comes up here, and then you can it, it collapses inside the grip and disappears. Or you can extend it out about yay far which means immediately you've got a little monopod in the back, you put a little bipod on the front, you can line this thing up on stuff and boy, it'll be a nail driver because you've got all that stability when you're shooting your rifle and, it, and you take it with you when you're out and about. So to put it mildly, I'm very impressed with this stock by Adaptive Tactical. I, uh, I've enjoyed shooting it, uh, I've enjoyed fiddling with it, and I can say that it's, it, it, it just is really well thought out it's a very good product. I'm very impressed with it. And so I wanted to share it with you. I generally don't do reviews on products I don't like because I was taught if you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. So I generally don't. Uh, and uh, so if I have a product and I'm reviewing it, it's because I've fiddled with it a lot and I really like it. And I can tell you, I've fiddled with this one a lot and I really like it. It's a great stock. Anyway, now I've shared with you just about everything I can think of about the thing that I've discovered I really like. Let's take it out on the range and shoot it, and then I'll come back. As you can tell, I'm a pretty big fan of this particular stock. I've been very impressed with it, and uh, I'm not easy to impress where stocks are concerned. They have to have a good fit and a finish, and they gotta really work. And this thing really works well for what it's designed to do, which is give your 1022 some better ergonomics and allow you to attach rails and other things to it that might be useful uh, in the context of a 1022 and keep some extra mags and all the other things that it does. So I'm really impressed with it. It's built very well, it's very solid, and frankly, I really like it. And if it wasn't for the fact that I don't own a 1022, I probably would talk to Adaptive Tactical and see if I could buy it from them. But uh, I don't own a 1022. If you've watched my videos, you know I'm a big fan of the Marlin Model 60, and uh, that's what I have uh, for 22 rifle and really enjoy shooting, and I don't have a need for a 1022 as well. So. Uh, this one is, uh, is one that was on loan to me from a buddy, and I was able to use it for today's video. Uh, not that they're not a great rifle, they really are. So if you're a 1022 person, please don't send me hate mail. Uh, but what you might want to do is investigate looking into this stock. It's a terrific stock. Anyway, thank you again for watching. I really appreciate it. If you want to look at the 1022 video that I did previously, uh, here it is. You can click on that. Uh, or if you're on a device where you can't click on that because it doesn't work, um, there, we'll put a link to that in the description, uh, or we'll have a little thing come across the cross top of the screen they call a card, and that should work on your phone or tablet or whatever, and you can go see that video there as well. Come on out to the P2K range, by the way, sometime if you get a chance. Today I've uh, seen two or three people while I was shooting videos that came over and said hi, and I'm grateful that they do. If that's you and you get a chance to come out to San Diego or you're in the San Diego area, come on by and say hi. I'm here generally two, three days a week, either shooting video or teaching. And uh, please don't be shy about saying hi to me. I'm, I'm just an average 
guy that's just as broke as everybody else and I happen to have a YouTube channel and I would very much enjoy meeting you and maybe we'll get a chance to shoot together. Besides, if you've never been to this range, come on out. It's a terrific range and I really enjoy shooting here and I'm very grateful uh, that they allow me to shoot videos here. It works out really well for me too. Anyway, thank you again. Please join the National Rifle Association if you haven't already. I want to urge you to do that. Our Second Amendment rights are under attack constantly. And one of the many things that you can do uh, to help fight is to join the NRA. So I put a link here for you to do that. It'll take you to a spot on our website that'll save you 10 bucks. And you can join the NRA for less than the cost of one box of ammunition. You can be a member of the NRA for a year. And that will help a ton. So please join. Once again, thank you for watching my videos. I really appreciate it. Have a wonderful week and be safe.